Hey everybody, it's Beth. Welcome to Infinite Garden. Today's video is a little bit different. I'm going to be sharing with you my entire makeup brush collection. This is a response to a viewer request and I have been wanting to talk about this for a while. I have a wide range of brushes from beauty supply store sets to works of art in the Japanese fude tradition. And I wanted to walk you through what I have in my collection, what I use all of the time, and what I almost never use. I can't wait to share these with you. If that sounds good to you, please stay tuned. This is an extremely inexpensive set that came from a beauty supply store. It came in one package, and I think it came with a sponge as well. If you're the type of person who doesn't really like to wash your brushes that much, it might be worth it to grab a set of brushes like this to have in your arsenal so that you can be sure to have a clean brush. You don't really want to use dirty brushes. It's important to clean your brushes. These are synthetic, and they're very soft, and I find them quite useful. I use all four of these to apply foundation. I like to use a brush for foundation and I find that these are all pretty dense and nice and soft. Natural hair bristles can sometimes irritate my skin and I find that these synthetic ones can actually be more gentle on my face. So I use this if I'm using either a liquid or a cream foundation. Sometimes I'll apply the foundation first and I'll use one of these just to blend it out. These are great and I like having four of them because it means that I can always have a clean brush on hand. This one's kind of unusual. It has a bit of a pointy tip. I suppose this would be good for getting into the inner eye corner. I find this to be just a little less useful than the big wide ones, but I suppose in a pinch it could be useful. If I had to give back any one of these, it'd be this one. This set also contains several eye brushes. These are quite long compared to some of the other brushes in my collection and they're pretty basic. I don't find them to offer great precision because these brushes are just a little bit loose like the density the number of hairs that are present are a little bit thinner than you get in a, with a higher quality brush and so sometimes I think they're best for blending and they aren't necessarily my favorite for blending. I get less use out of these eyeshadow brushes than I do out of the foundation brushes in this set. And so these are usually the last in my collection that I will use, but I do use these. Okay, this next batch of brushes, I would say is roughly of equal quality to the previous set that I showed you. But these are just a little bit more special because there's been some design put into the actual brush and I wanted to go through these and tell you which ones I like because there are some in here that I use all the time and some that I almost never use. Okay, this is a set of brushes that I picked up from Sephora. This was a holiday set and it was on steep clearance after the holiday. These are synthetic and there are four eyeshadow brushes and four complexion brushes. I find, generally speaking, that I use the complexion brushes the least. This type of brush with a fan, I can tell you, I just generally never use the fan. I just find it to be one of the least useful types of brushes for my particular makeup habits. Do any of you use these? Is this something that you find necessary? I think they're really meant for highlight, but I have a different type of brush that I like to use if I'm doing a, a highlight versus a fan. So this one almost never gets used. This is a foundation brush and this one is notable in that it is very dense. There are many bristles. This is really good for packing, like especially if maybe you had a concealer area that you really wanted to just lightly pat. This is a good one for that. I don't use this one much, but I do like having it around. This is an angled brush that is, I think, designed for either contour or maybe bronzer. It has a bit of a narrow head. It's just one I reach for last. I don't find this one particularly necessary. I use this one almost never. And this is a blush brush. This one's pretty good. I will use this one eventually. Again, this one isn't a favorite, but it's a good brush. It's nice and fluffy. You can see it's got pretty pretty decent density. It tapers somewhat. It's not a perfect fluffy brush and it kind of comes up to a point versus being, you know, sheared off at the top. These eyeshadow brushes are pretty decent. I actually, you can tell I've already used this one. I washed these the other day and I've already put this one to use. This is, I think, what they call a shader brush. It's flat and what it's nice for is picking up pigment 
from your eyeshadow palette and putting it down just like directly on the lid in a very precise way. I like this brush for that and I end up using this one quite a lot. It's the most used brush out of this set for me. And then these are pretty good. This is a blender and this is another kind of um, crease brush, especially it's kind of dense. It's good for putting shadow right there in the crease. This one is good for using shadow as a liner. It's very precise. I find this one to be just a little too sharp sometimes and I avoid using that one because it's just a little sharp on my eye. So these are, I would say, the next level up from the ones from the beauty supply store. These were from Sephora. This is a double-headed brush that I used for my eyebrows. I pretty much just use the spoolie to brush through my eyebrows. If you had a kit that included sort of like a gel brow or something like that, this would be really useful for putting that on. But I don't really do that very much. That's not usually how I do my brows, but it's here. I use this one all the time. Okay, these brushes are from Trixie Cosmetics, Trixie Mattel's line, and I have really loved these. What's funny about these brushes is that I suspect that they are made in an extremely similar way to the way that these beauty supply store brushes are made. If you look at them, this is gonna be pretty close. So these are different, but there's a lot of similarities here. And I know that if you were designing your own brush line with one of these companies, you would get to choose certain things like the length of your handle or the color of the handle, maybe the color of the ferrule, which is the metal part here and maybe the color of the bristles. So I suspect that this Trixie Mattel pink brush is not very different from the same brush that was in the beauty supply store. So I wanted to point that out. I think what you're partly paying for is a little bit of this cute design, which matters to me. I enjoy using this pink makeup brush. I mean, the fact that it's pink is appealing to me because I, I just, I'm like that. It's how I am. I'm probably never going to change, but I also like that these are a little bit shorter than the other ones. I find that that's just more useful, especially if I'm traveling or something like that. Just a little bit of a shorter size is more generally practical for me. The other thing that's different is that I think the density and the utility of these brushes has been very thoughtfully considered by Trixie Mattel. These have wound up being one of my favorite brush sets. So let me just walk you through these really quickly. This has been a great brush to use for smoking out my lower lash line. I find that I can get a great degree of precision. This brush is very small, but it's also just fluffy enough and dense enough that it kind of smokes it out at the same time. I don't like a harsh, precise line. I like to use a medium tone shade under my lower lash, and I generally like it to be very well blended. This is one of my absolute favorite brushes for that use. I use it all the time. This is a very fat and dense fluffy brush that is great for laying in your crease line. If you're putting eyeshadow in your crease and you're using you know, really natural color just to create some shadow, you're not doing a precise artistic eye, you're doing your daily makeup and you're just trying to get your shadow blended out beautifully into your crease, this brush is fantastic for it. It picks up the right amount of product and it instantly blends it out. I've been surprised by how much use I've gotten out of this brush. It's much bigger than what I would normally use as a crease brush. And for that reason, I find it gives me exactly the look that I need. This is a super useful blender brush. I like to keep this one clean and use it to blend out once my eye makeup is already on. This one I use a little bit less. I could see using some like Studio Fix Plus or Maron to make this wet and pick up some sparkles to add that onto my shadow. That would be really useful. It's nice and precise. It's a good little brush. I just don't use it this much because that's not how I wear my makeup every day. And this is really more of a concealer brush. This is nice under the eye, like if you put a little concealer down and you need to, you know, pat it in just to make sure that it's nice and blended out. It's nice and dense and very, very soft. Soft enough to use under my eye without irritating it. This is from, you know, a different line. You can see it's yellow, but it still is a Trixie Mattel brush. It's light and fluffy, so you can pick up just like a gentle little amount of highlight product and you can apply it very precisely. This has become my highlighter brush of choice. And of all of these, this is the brush I use the most. This has become my favorite daily powder brush. I've been using the Kosas Cloud Set Powder since I bought it 
pretty much haven't put it down. It's almost completely panned. I'm at the point now where I'm digging out what's left of it. And in almost every case, I've applied that powder with this powder brush. I find that this is a very nice size for me. I feel like it picks up the right amount of powder. I want to use this one every single day and I generally do. I like the size of it. I kind of like this smaller size. It's going to come with me when I travel. I've been surprised by how much I've loved these Trixie Mattel brushes because like I said, they're not that different from the ones from the beauty supply store, but I think more thought has gone into both the length of the handle, the type of brush you know, shape and then the bristle density. They've been designed by someone who uses a lot of makeup and therefore knows what works. These are a fantastic value for the money and I'm really happy to use them. And I love, I love this color yellow and I love this color pink. These make me happy to use. The last several sets were relatively newish to my collection. What we're getting into here are some of my oldest and most used and beloved brushes. This little set here is a set from Target. This is Sonia Kushik. I'm sure if you shop at Target, you've seen these before. I'm gonna pluck this little fan brush out right away. This is one of my least used brushes. I just don't love these. This one's different from the other fan brush in that it is a lot thinner and you really can pick up a little bit of highlighter and just sort of dust it gently. It's just not how I put on highlighter. I really do prefer this type of application method to this fan brush. I hang on to it though, just because why not? The rest of these brushes in the set are great. And if you're someone who has access to a Target and you see these Sonia Kushik brushes, I have to tell you, I've been surprised by how good they are. This brush is an angled, fluffy brush. These are all synthetics. This is my go-to bronzer brush. It's the first one that I reach for. I like how much product it can pick up. It's pretty dense and it picks up not too much, not too little, sort of just the right amount. And I like the way that it is angled. I feel like it fits right into the nook of my cheekbone. It goes exactly where I need it to go. I just, I love this and I use this one all the time. I think I've had this brush for 10 years. This is a very dense foundation brush. I don't use this one much, but I do eventually reach for this one if my brushes are dirty and I haven't had a chance to clean them. This is sort of like my junior varsity foundation brush. It's just a little too dense. I wish it were a little fluffier. It's a good brush, but I don't use this one that much. This eyeshadow brush is an absolute workhorse in my collection. I like this one for smoking out my lower lash line. This is my number one favorite brush for that purpose. It has you know, a nice pinched bristle head and it's pretty dense. It does a nice job of blending out as I go. I can sort of pick up a little bit of eyeshadow and draw it on, smoke it out really easily. It's by far my top choice for that. This is kind of like a shadow blender brush. Again, good for the crease. You can kind of just get right into your crease and blend it out. It's sort of similar to this Trixie Mattel one that I mentioned. Look how much smaller it is. This I like better because I actually like how large this is, but this is the same type of brush for the same type of purpose. For whatever reason, I've learned that I like this larger size better, but this is still a useful brush in my collection. Quickly, these are two other Sonia Koshik brushes that I don't use that much. This I think is meant to be a concealer brush. It has that kind of angle, but it's not that dense and I just don't like it that much. This one doesn't get much use in my collection. This is a blender brush, but I don't use this one much either because you know you have to work a little harder to blend it when it's more sparse like this and it's not as soft as I want it to be. So I reach for these ones last. This is a nice precise pencil brush and it's good for if you wanted to do a very precise liner look especially on your lower lash line. It would work well on the upper lash as well. This one is like a little sharp sometimes. It kind of hurts a little bit. So I don't use this one first, but it's useful. I just don't love how it feels on my eye. But this, on the other hand, is one of my absolute favorites. Again, Sonia Kushik from Target. It's soft on the eye, very comfortable to apply. It has a nice flat head so you can get great precision and I use this one all the time. I think this one even I was using in a video where I was applying eyeshadow and I received a comment asking about my brushes. Somebody asked specifically about this brush. I use this one all the time. This is a workhorse. These look so ratty. You can see I've just beaten these up. 
These are, I think, from Sonia Kushik. They could be Sephora. I'm not totally clear on that, so I'm not sure. This is a big, round, domed, fluffy brush. I think this one's nice if you're doing a simple wash all over the eye without any precision. This is a nice one. This one feels soft to the touch and it's dense enough that it is useful. This one I use a lot though. This one is a little bit more precise. So if you're doing again in the crease, if you're putting eyeshadow right in the crease, this one can you know be precise and still blend out well and it's nice and soft. This is just a beat up old brush, but I use it all the time. This is an eyeshadow brush that came in an Anastasia Beverly Hills palette. I think the Jackie Ina palette. These brushes are terrible. Why do I keep it? They're just not useful. There's almost no density on this end, so it just blends the eyeshadow away to nothing. This is maybe more useful, this end, but I don't love double-headed brushes. I'm just hanging on to this. Why, why do I do it? These brushes are all from the Sephora collection and I love all three of these brushes. These are workhorses right here. This is my number one favorite foundation brush. I love it. It's soft, it has a nice density when I brush it over my face. It doesn't irritate it in any way. It really does a good job of picking up liquid foundation and holding it and releasing it. I love this brush the most. I wish I had bought two because I'd rather have two of these than reach for my next favorite foundation brush. This is the blush brush that I reach for the most often. Again, from Sephora collection. I like it because it has good density. It's not so sparse that the blush just sort of whisks away and it's not so dense that it deposits, you know, a big stamp of blush on my face. I feel like it's just perfect for getting a well-blended powder blush look. I like the way it feels in my hand. It's kind of a nice, you know, length and I kind of like that it tapers down to a point. It's really looking old and beat up at this point, but this is a beloved brush. Again, this one is synthetic. This is also from the same line, same quality level, and this is my favorite concealer brush. So if I'm putting concealer under my eyes and all of my brushes are clean and I want to blend out my concealer, this is the very first brush that I will reach for. I find that it does a good job of blending away gently and it's super soft on my under eye. It doesn't irritate my skin. This has been a great brush. I'm drilling in on this because I think it's important to know that some of these you know, more accessible brushes that have these store brand names on them, Sephora or even the Sonia Kushik Target line, you know, they can be hit or miss, but at the same time, these are very useful tools and you don't have to spend a fortune to get a good quality brush that works for you every day. This is an ancient brush. I think my mother bought this in the 90s. Can you see this? This is an Elizabeth Arden brush. It's an I3. I'm telling you, this is from the 90s. I remember bringing this brush with me to college and I think I actually used it mostly as a lip brush. It's so small and nice and flat that it actually works beautifully as a lipstick lip brush, but it is an eyeshadow brush and it's great for that too. If you have like a little bit of shimmer that you want to add, if your look is mostly matte and you just want to add the lightest hint of shimmer on the center of your lid, this brush is petite and nice and flat and precise and you can just like very precisely pop that shimmer right on your little eyelid. I think I'm going to be buried with this brush. I've just decided that it's coming with me for the long haul. I read somewhere that you're supposed to replace your brushes every so often. Like, I think I saw something ridiculous like every year. I don't subscribe to that at all. If you take care of your things, they should last a lifetime. This one's now at least 30 years old and still going strong. I just wanted to share her with you. Okay, these brushes I would put in the designer category. These are brushes with a higher price point than any of the ones that I have shown you and they come attached to a specific well-known brand name which partly contributes to their higher price point. This is a Chanel foundation brush. This is a type of foundation brush that kind of comes in and out of style. It works really beautifully especially with a liquid style foundation. So if you apply the foundation you are meant to like whisk and blend the foundation with like just the, the tip here. Maybe you can apply it on the flat side, but then you blend it out with this the nice sharp tip. This is a nice brush. I've had this one for about 10 years. You can see 
some of the paint is coming off and the wood is exposed but it is still nice and tight in the ferrule. I think this one, it's, I think it's synthetic still. We're talking about a synthetic brush. I've used this one for years. I don't use it every time. I've kind of really gotten more into blending my foundation out with a brush more like this. But every once in a while, this is a brush that I reach for. I think it does leave a very like perfect finish. This is a Pat McGrath concealer brush. This came out when she released her concealer line. This is an ultra dense angled brush, perfect for getting into the inner corner of your eye and tapping, patting, stamping in and blending that concealer. It's a nice brush, I like it a lot. It's probably the best brush I have like this. But what I find on a day-to-day -day basis that if I'm doing the same thing, I love this slightly fluffier, more domed style brush to this type here. It's just what I use, this one. But this is a lovely brush. I really do like how this one looks though. I like that it's short. I think, you know, the people who really use makeup like Trixie Mattel and Pat McGrath do all seem to, you know, veer toward these shorter brushes. I think because it just makes it easier to move and pack and handle. And I, I do like a shorter handle. This is an eyeshadow brush from Patrick Ta. I literally bought two of these because I love it so much. This is my favorite shadow blender brush. I originally thought this was goat hair. If you look at the bristles, they do resemble goat hair, but they are in fact synthetic. This is a nice rose goldy metal. What is this? This is Four Eyes One is the name of this brush. I got this at Sephora. This is absolutely perfect for blending out shadow. It's my very favorite and I went ahead and bought two because one was always dirty. I needed to have a backup. Rather than reach for my next best blender brush, I ended up buying two. I love this Patrick Ta Four Eyes one. These are some shadow brushes from Fenty. I think these are pretty good. I just bought these two. I don't think I have any other brushes from the Fenty line. This one's already dirty. This is a good blender and this is a nice shader. It's got good density and it's very soft on the eyes. I think that Rihanna did a nice job with designing these eyeshadow brushes. They're pretty basic, pretty simple, super useful. This is from Makeup by Mario. This one is the EF2. It's just a good fluffy blender brush. I like this one. I don't like it as much as the Patrick Ta one. I'll tell you why. Let me get more specific. And this is why. I like that the Patrick Ta brush has a little bit more of a flat top. I feel like sometimes that's what I want. I kind of want to get this edge against what I'm doing because I want to stay under my brow bone in a more precise way. And sometimes the domed fluffy sort of approach can restrict the level of precision I can get for my eyeshadow look. And so in the end, I tend to prefer this shape. This is a brush by Guerlain and it's sold with their meteorites. They specifically suggest that this is the right brush if you're going to use their meteorites powder. This is goat hair and goat hair is coarse and picks up quite a lot of the pigment and I think that's why they recommend it. I find that this can actually be slightly irritating on my cheeks. It's a little bit rougher than a synthetic brush, which is surprising, but it is very beautiful. I think this pink color is to die for, and you know, it really does give that air of luxury. I love the white handle. I like how this feels. I do use this when I use the Meteorites powder. I have it in both Claire and I think maybe it's the medium color. I like the Meteorites and I always use this brush. This is a brush that comes with the Chanel Sublimage La Tente. This is meant to blend out that foundation. It's a pretty good brush, although it did fall apart. This cap fell off right away, and so I've already had to use some Gorilla Glue to reattach this you know, Chanel end to the brush. And, you know, it's pretty good, but I do like it for traveling. I think that, you know, in a travel case, this is a really great thing to have. I think it looks nicer than it is, to be totally honest. But that's where I got this one, and it's in my collection. I'm going to keep it. Finally, these are the works of art in my collection. These are Japanese Fude brushes. I hope that I am pronouncing it correctly. Fude is a Japanese art form of brush making. These brushes come from a specific region in Japan and they are made by artisans. I bought these on fude.com. The two brands here are Hako Hodo and Chiko Hodo. 
and I just want to talk through these a little bit. I bought these as Christmas gifts to myself. I usually buy myself a really nice birthday gift and a really nice Christmas gift every year. Something that I maybe feel a little embarrassed to ask someone else to buy for me. Usually for my birthday it's a Pat McGrath Mothership and then sometimes for Christmas it's one of these Japanese Fude brushes. These are glorious. I wanted to save these for the end because I wanted to make it clear that excellent makeup brushes can be found at the drugstore or kind of Sephora price point. There is no need to spend this amount of money on makeup brushes, but if you are someone like me who can be sensitive to craftsmanship and sensitive to beauty, I think these brushes are really special and I want to talk about them quickly. This set is from Chikohoro. These come in a beautiful paper box with the Japanese paper design wrap. This is a set that was made with persimmons wood and then the actual bristles are dyed with persimmons fruit. I just can't get over how gorgeous these are. They're extremely lightweight and very lovely. These are natural hair brushes. These are not vegan or cruelty free. This is a blush brush. This is a gorgeous blush brush. You can see they have crimped the ferrule, pinched here to become somewhat flat. It's not like a perfect globe. It's a little more narrow, which allows for greater precision and it is quite small. This brush can actually sometimes irritate my skin a little bit. I have super sensitive and reactive skin. I actually do prefer in many cases a synthetic bristle but look how gorgeous this is this does apply makeup beautifully it's just that my skin reacts to it a little bit so anyway that's the blush brush this is a glorious shader brush so this is wonderful for picking up some eyeshadow and just lightly placing it on the lid i love it it's gorgeous look at that i love the color look at how the color of the bristles corresponds to the color of the handle if you're into this kind of thing i mean it's just exquisite this is a wonderful little pencil brush, perfect for you know, your lower lash line, adding a little bit of definition and then blending that out. This is lovely. This is really fabulous. I would say this one, you know, sometimes I don't use these as readily as I use some of the less expensive ones because I don't want to handle these too much or wash them too many times. That's probably not the right way to go about things. It's also why I've sort of stopped at having these brushes here is because they're precious and they are expensive. I have what I have and I'm just going to take care of these. I don't expect to add more of these to my collection, but the, these are really wonderful tools. Ooh, back up. This is actually another Pat McGrath brush. This belonged in the last batch. It was white, so I, my eyes just sort of grouped it with these. This is, I'll just back up real quick. This one is a... Um, buffer brush. I'm not really sure I'm using this one right. It has two levels. It's almost like having a sheer maxi skirt over a mini skirt. This one's pretty good. It's a buffer brush. I'm still learning how to use this one. I probably could have skipped it. It seemed interesting to me. I don't know if it's necessary, but it's here. Back to the Japanese brushes. So this is a little set by Hakohudo. This is a lovely powder brush. This one is really quite similar to the Trixie Mattel powder brush that I love so much. I think I gravitate toward the Trixie Mattel one because it is less precious and I feel a little more comfortable just banging it out every day and putting my powder on. But this brush is super similar to it. A little smaller, but just as useful, you know, if I'm just putting powder on my T-zone or on my chin, I really like having this smaller size. And again, I like that they're short. I like these shorter brushes. I've just decided over time that that's my preference. This is a blush brush and it's really quite small and delicate. Look how it compares to the blush brush I say that I use all the time. It's so small and delicate. If you have smaller features or like a greater level of precision, these little brushes are so lovely for that reason. You can just gently and delicately add just the smallest amount of product with great precision. This is a a little angled concealer brush sort of similar to this Pat McGrath one they're kind of in the same family this is not quite as dense as the Pat McGrath one this one has a little more play and I think blends a little more gently um, I would prefer this brush to this one although neither one is my favorite concealer brush 
This is an absolute favorite eyeshadow blender brush. It blends beautifully and effortlessly. I love this one. I use this one all the time. This is a little shader brush where you can just put on the eyeshadow right where you want it. It's so similar to this Elizabeth Arden brush. They're even just about the same size. The Hakuhoto one might be slightly smaller, but this is for absolute precision and placement of your eyeshadow. I think this is really nice to have. If you're someone who is getting into eyeshadow or you're not, that comfortable with it, I do recommend picking up a really small little brush like this and learning how to kind of like slowly and precisely place your eyeshadow. You might find that you have a better result when you're using a little tool like this. This is a giant powder brush from Hakuhoto. This one, it's kind of funny, it bears some resemblance to this cheaper beauty supply store brush in terms of the size of the ferrule, but you can tell here, you know, the difference between a plastic handle and this lacquered wooden handle and the polish of this metal, the quality of the metal. It's a, it's a heavier gauge and much more polished. It's these little simple details that set it apart. This is wonderful if you wanted to just dust on loosely a finishing powder. I wouldn't necessarily use this for setting powder because I do like a little bit of a smaller brush for setting powder. Here's how it compares to this and to the Trixie Mattel brush that I like for my setting powder. This is much larger. I like using this one for finishing powder if I just wanna add a little luminousness over my face, specifically like the hourglass powders. This is the brush that I will use. Anyway, I hope you found this interesting and I'd love to hear from you. Do you make use of makeup brushes or do you mostly use your fingers? Do you use the sponge tip applicators that come with the eyeshadow kits? I use those for years, but I'm really happy now to be using makeup brushes. Please let me know down in the comments. Anyway, I hope you're all doing well out there and I hope you have a great week ahead. Thank you so much for watching. Talk soon.